Patrick Foley of Game Time Connecticut. Sean, thanks for coming in. Always good to see you. Thank you. All right, so let's get right to it. We're going to start with, we had all of these home teams that had previously been undefeated, losing. Let's start with, we knew it would be a good game, but I think it would be fair to say that a lot of people were surprised to see East Hartford knocking off Southington. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> right? I don't think, I think it, uh, the Record Journal said that the East Hartford had, hadn't beaten Southington in 20-something years. Uh, I mean, I, I got it as far as 12 before I stopped, or it was 15 before I stopped. I don't remember the last time. And then, you know, this is a team, Southington, that had won, I believe, 42 consecutive regular season games. That includes the Cheshire game at the end of the year. That includes all the CCC teams they were playing in the regular season. And uh, stunning. I mean, I, you know, it was a game to watch. I mean, East Harvard came in with just with one loss. They've been kind of like living on the edge all year. Um, but and, and, and in this one, they just kind of hung around. Southern, again, wasn't playing as well as they had been in the first half of the season. That's two straight games. Uh, you know, uh, so they're up, up a touchdown, and it was, I guess, 20 to 13. East Harbor comes storming back. Raycon Tompkins, the quarterback, and it was just an incredible result. And that was probably the most surprising thing I, I, of the whole night. So I, 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 got, I wasn't... And there were a lot of crazy. I, and I was surprised just when you look at how well Southington has done in the history of Southington. Yeah. But having seen Southington the week before, I, I, they looked vulnerable to yeah. me, especially to a good kind of well-rounded team that East Hartford is. So. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. and that's what we all thought. We said, oh, that's a little troubling that East yeah. Hartford, or sorry, excuse me, that uh, Southington. Southington. Well, it was New Britain that gave them yeah, a Yeah, New Britain played game. well, you know, and then they pulled away in the second half. In this case, the offense didn't play great. I think Barmore was uh, picked off a few times, or at least once at the end, to set up the uh, the winning touchdown, and just an awesome effort by East Hartford. Now they're in the picture. Now we have to start thinking about them because now they're up in the in the in the uh, they have that you know was it Kevon Tom uh, what's his name Kevon Jones the the UConn uh, linebacker right. who you know he he played great in the game, and, and they're a team now they're in the. Double L standings and, now. And it also puts pressure on Southington the rest of the way through. They're no longer just a shoe in for the play no, playoffs. Right? No, I mean, no, they're they going to win some, have to win some games, right. and then you have that big Thanksgiving Day game coming up they're, against Yeah, Cheshire, they're going to be right? just, just yeah. as desperate as Cheshire probably yeah. in that game if everything yeah. kind of holds. But yeah. <laughs> let's, Crazy. Let's, let's talk about another game that mm. shook things up in the, in the top 10 poll West Haven versus Shelton. This one, you know, West Haven have been playing so well, but. Shelton wasn't playing poorly uh, either, no. right? And and Shelton hadn't lost since since week one right. against six Cheshire. Straight, or five straight going in. And there was some stat or about this straight. one as well, Sean, about uh, West Haven hadn't won consecutive games against Shelton going back to like 2005 or 2006. Yeah, something like that. But, but they've always been a uh, – they, they've always kind of stuck in West Haven's craw over the year. You know, West Haven's always had tr – Trouble with Shelton. I think if they're the only, if they've had, if there's a Jake Roberts with the, the somersault that gave yeah. them the tie. Uh, but, you know, Ch Shelton's had, had their issues with West Haven. Vice it's probably one of the best rivalries going in the SEC right now. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a tremendous battle. I mean, you know, Shelton goes in number 10, and this was a key play here. There's uh, Jack Carr who come back in, played in a whole month. Comes back, ran for 120 yards, and it had that key fumble right there that led to the winning score, which is right here. I believe no, no, this isn't it. But there's Carr again, pretty amazing. He's just he was just awesome all night. But that was a it was a huge, huge uh, victory for Shelton. Now they're they're they've won six straight, uh, and they are uh, now they're right in the the kind of the top of the picture there in the, in the double L standings. And they have a pretty easy schedule the rest of the way. I don't want to give anything to them, but you know they've it, gotten their they're really they've got the tough games, games out of the way. Yeah. So you know they, now it just becomes a kind of a play well the next three three games and and it becomes kind of a waiting game with them. Let's look at the top five now. We, we we've been going uh, previously the bottom five first, but let's look at the top five and sure. see how they well. Darien, uh, there's no change there, but Greenwich Boy has has vaulted up to number two. Yeah, Greenwich is now number two. Um, they, uh, the F, kind of a da quiet week in the FCAC. Not so this coming week. You know, obviously you have uh, Greenwich is, is playing. Um, I oh, is it Richfield uh, at at uh, at Cardinal Stadium on Saturday afternoon? Then you have Ansoni, which just absolutely crushed um, Seymour last week, and I don't think anyone's beaten them in the regular season. Unless you want to talk about Naugatuck, which is still undefeated, beat Derby. Um, you, know, you know, Plasky, the quarterback, and, and the guys in Dave Salaz's team has played exceptionally well. So we're kind of looking at that Thanksgiving battle with Ansoni. Is this the year? I mean, Ansoni has won 71 consecutive NVL games. Yes. Dating back to 2010. 
2010. Yeah, well, Naugatuck is certainly a team to be reckoned with, but I want to talk about this Cromwell-Portland okay. team because they had come into um, they had come into last Friday night's game unbeaten. At home, Valley Regional comes in and, and, and knocks them off. Yeah, well, Valley uh, had, a, had a rough game against Old Saybrook Westbrook. So did Cromwell Portland, but Old Saybrook Westbrook kind of rolled up their de rolled up their offense uh, against them in that in that matchup. Uh, so you know it was an absolute barn burner. One of a few great games that happened this weekend, West Haven included, in the North Haven Xavier too. But you know, and uh, you know it was a nip and tuck battle back and forth. You know, you had uh, Matt Kalina, the, the quarterback of the Valley, really kind of took charge in this game and. And him and Ernest John Pierre were, were great in leading a rally back. It was seesaw. There's so many great plays. Uh, I wasn't there. I wish I was. I know Ned Griffin was there, and he was just like that game was incredible. I, you know, he, he was glad he went there, and I'm kind of glad. I, I'm sorry I missed it. Great game though. But uh, Cromwell Porter, you, you, you were at another big game. I was that another. Night. Yeah, well, <laughs> you West Haven Xavier. Masterpiece. What the, the North Haven. The North Haven Xavier. Yeah. Was you you Saturday tweeted out about how, how how taken in you were with that game. What, uh, what a comeback and uh, what a way to end. It was just a great game between two teams that battle each other really well. You know, I feel really kind of, I don't want to say bad, but it's unfortunate that Xavier, you know, is having such a struggle on, de on defense this year. Offensively, they've had their struggles as well against Wilma Cross. They had problems. But, you know, the quarterback, uh, Will Levis is, is going to Penn State, absolutely lit up the, the night against North Haven. They were down 27-0. It was 14-0 at halftime. They were down 27-0 in the third quarter, midway through, and the next thing you know, it's a, it, they're ahead 28-27. It was one of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen. Xavier's had a few of them. But, and, then North, and, then, and then Mark Montano and North Haven came right back, and it was a seesaw all the way. It, just, the week was just incredible. They finally went at North Haven. They're, uh, they're, pretty, they're sitting pretty well in Class L right now, uh, although they have some huge games left. But just a pivotal week. We, we didn't have a week like this. In, uh, in high school football this year, and finally we had just something that shook things up. Really, really so South Windsor was another team that lost. South let's, Windsor. Let's take a look at the bottom five. So we went one yeah. through five, so let's go to six or ten. So so Massac is still hanging around undefeated. Shelton is now move up. Well, I think Shelton was ten, moved up to seven. It, and Middletown is hanging right there despite the fact that they just keep beating people up. West West Haven obviously dropping and Southington dropping. Yeah, I was I was a little shocked that, that there was none, none of the teams in the top ten this week dropped out. They all just kind of switched yeah. positions. I was a little surprised by that. A lot of voters didn't know what to quite make of it. Um, they didn't penalize West Haven and, and Southern. But there are a lot of teams below them you start to look at, and you're like, maybe they should be ranked, or maybe they should be ranked. You know, you, people, a lot of people love Naugatuck this week, or, you know, uh, Rocky Hill people are still looking right. at. I'm, but I've been voting Naugatuck in the top ten, just just to throw that out there. Okay. I, I mean, they, they, they just keep beating people, and – now, now, if Ansonia's there, then maybe they can be there. Well, that's 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 my thing, and I think it'll be a nice game coming up between <laughs> Naugatuck and Ansonia when that happens on Thanksgiving Day as well. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah, hopefully yeah. that's a great game. I mean, you, that that's a rivalry been played for 120 something years, and uh, it, it just hasn't been great lately. Naugatuck right. has never. I mean, they were the last team to beat Ansonia in 2010. That was the last time Ansonia lost, um, and that was back when Arkell Newsom was a, a freshman. At Ansonia, that's how long ago that was. And now, now and, he's and, uh, yeah. Well, now he's injured, but but right. Been, but now he's a senior at yeah, UConn. Yeah. 